Hi, I'm Michael Correa, and this is Psych Exam Review. In this video, we're going to look at meditation as a possible altered state of consciousness. Now, in the previous video, I talked about hypnosis as a possible altered state of consciousness, and I mentioned that hypnosis and meditation are quite similar. And this is because they both involve a state of relaxation, a calm state of mind. And the main difference between the two is that in hypnosis, we have particular suggestions that a hypnotist provides to a hypnotized subject. Whereas in meditation, we generally don't have a focus on a particular suggestion. Okay, we're going to look at two main types of meditation in this video, focused awareness meditation and mindfulness meditation. So focused awareness meditation refers to a type of meditation which a person has a single focus of attention. So this focus can vary. It might be a particular sight or a particular sound, um, but the point of the meditative session is to remain focused on that single thing. So uh, it's common for people to focus on something like uh, their breath. So they simply focus on breathing in and breathing out and they try to keep their attention only on their breathing. Or they might focus on uh, something like a candle flame or a particular sound, uh, like a particular bell that is uh, rung at a regular interval. Or people might use a mantra. So a uh, meditative practice that uses a mantra will be a focused awareness type of meditation. So a mantra is just a word or a phrase that's repeated over and over again. And it might be repeated mentally or it may be chanted and you may even have a group of people who are all chanting it in unison. And so you might be familiar with some common mantras that are used, uh, such as Om or Hare Krishna, or if you watch Curb Your Enthusiasm, you might know Jaya. Uh, but the point of a mantra is not about the particular word or its meaning. The focus is on tracking your awareness. So a mantra provides a way to track awareness. You can see, am I still paying attention to the thing I'm supposed to be paying attention to? And the same is true for focusing on breathing or focusing on a candle flame or focusing on a you know, particular sound. Is All of these give you a way to track your awareness and then notice if you have any deviation from what you're supposed to be paying attention to. So it's essentially a way of keeping your attention focused on something and noticing when your attention is not on that thing. So suddenly you realize that you haven't been paying attention to your breath or you didn't repeat the mantra or uh, you were looking at something other than the candle flame. And when you realize this, you now say, okay, I bring my attention back and I try again to maintain this focus. And this is expected to happen. You know, the, the point of this meditation is that it's hard to do this. And I'll talk about that again at the end of the video. Okay, so another type of meditation is mindfulness meditation. And so what mindfulness meditation does is it involves awareness of all the sights and sounds or thoughts and feelings around you. So rather than focusing on a single thing, the idea is it's uh, a bit more open to anything that might happen. You may suddenly notice the sound of birds chirping or you might have a certain thought that enters your mind and it's okay to attend to it. So in mindfulness meditation, you attend to any of the sights or sounds or uh, feelings or thoughts that you have. Okay, so uh, w why is this any different from just sort of sitting calmly and, and just uh, listening to things or hearing things? Well, the idea is that you attend to these things, but you don't react to them. So you try to separate your awareness from your emotional response. You try not to get attached to any of these things that you notice. So while you attend to these things, you avoid attachment to any particular thing. Right? You try to keep yourself open to other things that might happen. So you hear birds chirping, and rather than thinking about birds, and, and you realize for the next five minutes you've been thinking about you know, memories of particular birds, or trying to, you're trying to figure out what kind of bird it is based on the sound that you're hearing, rather than becoming attached to that idea, you simply allow it to pass you by. Right? You hear the birds chirping, and you know, you know those are birds chirping, and then you're listening for something else, and then you notice you can hear your refrigerator humming, or you hear uh, the sound of a car driving down the street or something. Uh, the idea is you don't become attached to any of these things that you're uh, noticing. Right? You're noticing them, and that's it. And so this is similar to what I talked about in the video on hypnosis, because I mentioned this dissociation theory of hypnosis that Ernest Hilgard proposed. And the idea that uh, he proposed was that uh, people were separating their awareness from their emotional response. And this 
particular case, it was with, with pain. So people were aware of the pain that they were experiencing from holding their hands in ice water, but they didn't feel the pain as much. Their subjective experience of the pain was altered by uh, being in a hypnotic session. And this might be quite similar to what we think of with mindfulness meditation. So people are aware of these stimuli around them, but they avoid attachment and they don't have emotional responses to them. So we have this separation between awareness and reactivity to that. So when you catch yourself having a particular thought during the meditative session, let's say you have some negative thought that comes to mind, rather than dwelling on it and ruminating and you know thinking all these things, oh, I can't believe I said this embarrassing thing yesterday, you know, it suddenly comes to mind, the idea is, okay, that's the thought that I'm having and I just let it, let it go. And this is sometimes um, an analogy that's used to think about you know, sitting under a waterfall and, and the water is just constantly flowing by and those like all your thoughts are streaming past and sounds and sights are, are moving past you and you just let them go by. You don't try to hold on to any of them. All right, so that's the sort of uh, focus of what you're trying to accomplish in mindfulness meditation. Now in both of these types of meditation and, and there's many other types as well, um, this state of relaxation it's sometimes referred to as the relaxation response. And this is by a researcher named Herbert Benson, who investigated the physiological effects of meditative practices. And he proposed this relaxation response as the opposite to the fight or flight response. So I've mentioned in an earlier video, the fight or flight response. And this isn't actually the best name for this because um, people don't just fight or flee. There's also a freeze response that was added later, um, but didn't really make it into the name. We still usually call it the fight or flight response. And the idea of the fight or flight response is it's preparation for threats. So, you know, we have some threat and this activates this um, process in our body that prepares us to deal with this threat. So it increases our heart rate and our stress hormones go up and other processes are decreased, things like digestion are uh, reduced because you know digestion isn't all that important if you're being chased by a tiger. Okay, so the idea of the relaxation response is that engaging in a meditative practice counteracts the negative effects of the fight or flight response. And so it's going to decrease things like your heart rate and your breathing and your blood pressure and levels of stress hormones which uh, we'll go into a lot more detail in a unit on stress and health uh, in the future. And it's going to increase those things that would be reduced by the fight or flight response. So it's going to help to increase processes relating to digestion and to immune function. And so uh, the idea here is that there would be real physiological benefits to practicing some type of meditation where you sit and you try to enter this relaxed state. Okay, so how do you go about doing this? How do you begin practicing meditation? Well, I have a couple tips for you. And the first is to avoid thinking of meditation as some sort of, you know, esoteric, mystical experience. Um, there are all sorts of rich cultural traditions and, and rituals associated with meditation, and they're certainly fascinating to learn about, but you don't need to learn about them in order to start meditating. Right? And if you think of it as some sort of mystical experience that's going to happen and your third eye is going to open or whatever, you might be fairly disappointed with your first few sessions of meditation and that might tempt you to give up. So I think you shouldn't think of it that way. You should think of it as just trying to relax, just trying to calm yourself down, just sitting quietly and allowing yourself some time to just sit. And that's really all there is to it, is you're just sitting and relaxing. Now, I recommend sitting uh, because if you lay down, you'll probably fall asleep. And, you know, that's because if you're laying down and you're very relaxed, it's, it's easier to fall asleep than if you're sitting. So really, all you need to do is sit comfortably and try to relax. Now, you might choose to try focused awareness meditation or mindfulness meditation or some other type of practice. Um, but the other thing that I would recommend to you is to realize that it's supposed to be hard. So I mentioned this with the focused awareness meditation. The point is that it's hard to keep your attention focused on a single thing. I mean, usually our mind is wandering and it's sort of flitting around to all sorts of different ideas or sights or sounds. And so it's difficult to meditate and it's supposed to be difficult. It's supposed to be different from how you normally engage with the world. So 
recognize that it's okay that you have trouble with it. Okay. Sometimes people will try meditation. And they'll say, "Oh, you know, I I got too distracted. I I couldn't." You know, couldn't keep my focus. Well, that's that's a sign that you really should try practicing meditation more. You you want to try to learn how do I overcome that distraction. So the point here is it's supposed to be hard. Even experienced meditators find you know sometimes it's just hard to keep your mind focused on something, or you you find yourself getting attached to particular thoughts that you have. That's normal. That's okay, and that's what you're trying to learn how to avoid. So distraction is inevitable. It's it's going to happen if you sit down to meditate. You know it's going to happen to you. And the point is you're learning how to deal with that. You're you're learning how to sort of brush it aside. You're learning how to say, okay, this negative thought came to mind, and I started ruminating a bit, and I caught myself. Right. The point is you're catching yourself and say, okay, maybe next time I'll be a little better at catching myself sooner. You know, and eventually you get better and better at that. And so. Later, when you have some negative thought come to mind, you're able to sort of let it go more quickly because you've practiced that. Right. So uh, it's supposed to be hard. It's there's supposed to be distraction. That's kind of the point, and that doesn't mean that you're bad at meditating or that it's it's um, you know it's not for you or something. Okay. So if you're interested in some other tips on meditating, uh, one book that I highly recommend uh, was very helpful for me is called Wherever You Go, There You Are. That's by John Kabat-Zinn. He's written a number of books on meditation. Um, and that's one that I recommend, and I'll put a link in the video description、uh, where you can find out more about that book. I'll also put a link in the video description to Herbert Benson's *The Relaxation Response*, which I also recommend that you check out if you're interested in learning about some of the effects of meditation. Hope you found this helpful. If so, please like the video and subscribe to the channel for more. Thanks for watching.